Hey, welcome to a new year. Happy New Year and the privilege of taking a few minutes in scripture. I'm so glad to be with you and I, I love you. I'm so glad that you are a part of my life and I can be a part of your life on any level and so grateful to know that you are walking in hope in this season. So blessings upon you and life and joy to you as we take a couple minutes with scripture. This comes out of Matthew 2. After the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, wise men or magi from the east came to Jerusalem and said, where is this one who's been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. He called the people's chief priests to teach the law to him and, and asked them where the Messiah was to be born. And they said, in Bethlehem in Judea, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, are not by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men to him and asked, to discern exactly when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to, Jew to Bethlehem saying, go, make careful search for the child. When you have found him, come back, return to me so that I too may go and worship him. The wise men, after having heard King Herod, went on their way and the star they had seen went before them and it stopped over the place where the child lay. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed when they came to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they worshipped him, opening their treasures, presenting him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the wise men returned to their country by another route. That's the end of this short piece of scripture. I love the character of the wise men. I've wondered... Like, what else could they have done other than come and search for Jesus? Well, they could have not paid attention at all. They could have not even noticed what was going on in the heavens, knowing that the heavens were telling what was coming about on earth. They could have ignored the heavenly speech, as scripture says, but they didn't. So what, what I learned about these guys, that they didn't ignore those things, but followed them. I, I see such perseverance in them, don't you? I mean, like they traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles by camel across deserts to come to Jerusalem. That's huge perseverance, a huge willingness to sacrifice, not only sacrifice their lives, their time, their businesses, but also of their substance. They gave of their gold, their frankincense and myrrh to express their worship to Jesus. And what a contrast these kings, these magi present over against King Herod, don't they? Whereas they truly came to worship Jesus, King Herod only pretended to want to worship Jesus. We knew he didn't want to worship him, right? He wanted to destroy anyone that could threaten his throne. What a contrast in behavior. What a contrast in approaches. What a contrast in belief systems. The wise men were, we noticed in this passage, were keen on listening not only to the heavens, but listening to their dreams because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and they listened. I don't know. It seems like they had so many characteristics that are really positive. They were willing to persevere, willing to sacrifice, willing to worship, willing to be released from that which was their substance in order to worship Jesus. They're willing to travel far distances to seek after him, only to see him just for a night, maybe, just for a moment, and then turn around and return to their homeland. I, I tell you, they've always impressed me. I mean, like, that's a long way to go to church. And yet they traveled all that distance and didn't stay, but a short period of time in order to return again. I just really am struck with just that depth of character. And I wonder, today do we see such people around us, anywhere in this world, that are willing to sacrifice their all persevere through all kinds of difficulties in order to seek after and to discover and bow down before Jesus? Do we find people that are willing to go to any length 
to draw near and experience Jesus in their lives. Of course, today, because Jesus is spiritually with us all the time, we don't have to travel long distances. And yet, what a characteristic to have, to desire to travel long distances, to worship this one who was born for you, for me. I tell you, when you're hopeless and and needing something to give you hope, just turn to Jesus. Just turn to Jesus and, and guard your heart. It seems like this is a contrast in hearts too, right? Hearts that seek, that persevere, that sacrifice for Jesus and a heart that is uh, armored around with its own defenses and doesn't want anything to do with Jesus, indeed wants to kill him. No wonder Proverbs says in 423, guard your heart above all else, for from it flow the wellsprings of life. May life be a part of your heart, and may you overflow with joy in this life. God bless you guys. Thanks for taking a few minutes with me. Go check this story out, Matthew 2, 1 through 12, and enjoy your day. Make the most of it. Seek Jesus.